Let's settle this once and for all. Do HDR TVs with high peak brightness benefit from dynamic metadata such as Dolby Vision? Coming right up. Hello everyone, Vincent Thieu from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. Here I have two 55-inch Sony XE93 LED LCD TVs, which are also marketed as the Bravia X930E in the States. This one, closest to me, has been updated with the Dolby Vision firmware by USB drive, whereas the one on the far end is still on the old firmware that doesn't support Dolby Vision. Today, what we are going to do is a Dolby Vision dynamic metadata versus HDR10 static metadata comparison on these HDR TVs with high peak brightness. Now, in an ideal world, I would be doing this comparison on two Sony ZD9, also known as the Z9D in the USA, but there's no way I can get my hands on those together at the same time, so I'm already very grateful to Richard Sounds Manchester for sending me these two XE93s to compare. They are doing all they can to support me putting out this fabulous content, so please, please, please support them in return. If you are considering buying any television, even if it's not, the Sony XC93, give Richard Sounds a call on 0333 900 0086. Mention HDTV Test, and they'll take care of you with great price and customer service. Thank you. Now, where was I? Right, the XC93. Even though it's not as brilliant as the ZD9, it's still impactful enough to make this comparison a valid one. After calibration to D65 white point, the Sony XC93 can hit a peak brightness of 1400 nits on a 10% window, 700 nits full fill, and its innovative slim backlight drive plus technology behaves like a full array local dimming LED LCD TV with 64 zones. I call it a baby ZD9, or up north here in Manchester, Babe ZD9. I want to talk a bit about the long-awaited Dolby Vision firmware update on Sony TVs. It's now available for the 2016 and 2017 Bravia with X1 Extreme chipset, such as the Sony XC93, XC94, ZD9, and also the A1 or A1E OLED. If you own one of these TVs and are not getting the software update automatically through the internet, you can download it from Sony's website and install it using a USB drive, which is what I did. After the firmware upgrade, you can start watching Netflix programs in Dolby Vision, and also from the Apple TV 4K box, as long as it's running tvOS 11.3 or later. Regarding the Oppo 203 and 205, we understand that a firmware update that will enable Dolby Vision compatibility with Sony TVs over HDMI is currently under testing at Dolby Labs, so hopefully it won't be too long before we can start watching Dolby Vision 4K Blu-rays on these Sony X1 Extreme televisions. But until then, we will have to make do with comparisons mainly from the TV's Netflix app. If I use the Apple TV 4K box to compare, I'll be adding another confounding factor in the equation, namely the Dolby Vision to HDR10 conversion done by the Apple TV 4K box, which I've explained and demonstrated in a video last year. Okay, after installing the Dolby Vision firmware update, the Sony XC93 will kick into a separate Dolby Vision picture preset upon playback of Dolby Vision content. Surprisingly, the default color temperature in Dolby Vision mode is neutral, which is far too blue, causing skin tones to look pasty, as you can see from this pause frame from Altered Carbon on Netflix here. By the way, I was struggling so hard to find scenes in Altered Carbon that doesn't contain nipples for demonstrating my points. See what I did there? If your Sony X1 Extreme TV has been professionally calibrated by myself, just copy the color temperature and advanced color temperature settings from Cinema Pro mode to the Dolby Vision preset. Sony's SDR calibration maps very well to HDR10 and from my testing to Dolby Vision 2, as you shall see throughout this video. In case you are wondering, there is currently no way to calibrate Dolby Vision per se on Sony TVs at the time I filmed this video in April 2018. These TVs don't respond to Dolby Vision metadata from the Muridio and VideoForge Pro signal generators, 
and neither Sony or Dolby has released the necessary golden reference files. Ok, enough waffling from me, let's jump right into the comparison. So the most obvious benefit of Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata versus HDR10 Static Metadata is the retention of bright specular highlight detail. In this scene, from altered carbon, around 21 minutes and 14 seconds into episode 1, there's more detail in the shape of the sun, the clouds, and also the texture on this futuristic structure on the Dolby Vision presentation, whereas these very same details are blown out on the HDR10 version. Note that, because of my camera's limited dynamic range, I have to lower the exposure to fully capture the specular highlight detail, so shadow detail may look crushed on your screen. That's just my camera and how I had set my exposure. In real life viewing, the shadow detail is completely intact. Now, you can lower the TV's contrast value to restore the lost highlight detail, but it would lower the overall APL or average picture level too, causing the picture to look too dark. Another example of specular highlight retention can be found in Godless Episode 1, around the 13 minute mark. Look at how the sun and the neighboring clouds are displayed with less clipping on the Dolby Vision set. Yet, the APL or overall brightness is similar to the HDR10 version. And that's the key advantage of dynamic metadata. The embedded information within the video signal can tell the TV what is the optimal tone curve to use for this particular scene. Unlike static metadata where the same tone curve have to be applied throughout the entire movie. Let's move to darker scenes. And again, we found that the Dolby Vision presentation exhibited more shadow detail in general, as you can see in this shot from Altered Carbon. Also, while LED LCDs are marketed as having higher color volume because of their higher peak brightness, they can struggle to saturate low light scenes properly due to contamination from the backlight. However, in this frame here, the Dolby Vision mapping certainly kept the lady's face better saturated in the dark compared with the HDR10 version. Of course, more shadow detail and better low light saturation doesn't mean it's correct. Unfortunately, I will probably never have access to a Dolby Pulsar mastering monitor, so I don't actually have a frame of reference. But the general pop and balance of the Dolby Vision picture definitely made it more pleasing to watch, at least to my eyes. Oh, one thing. The Netflix app on Sony TVs showed elevated black level in certain scenes in Dolby Vision. For example, the end credits in Mindhunter Season 1 Episode 1 and the opening credits of Mute. You can see the increase in glow and blooming on the Dolby Vision set. This is the Dolby Vision elevated black level issue that LG 2016 and 2017 OLED owners have been complaining about, and it appears that the Dolby Vision firmware update on Sony TVs is using an older Dolby Vision library. When we played the same scenes through the Apple TV 4K box, which is usually the fastest to be updated with the latest Dolby Vision library, the blacks are much closer to the HDR10 version, with significantly less blooming and clouding. And this is one big frustration with Dolby Vision. Dolby Laboratories control all the IP or intellectual property. It's a closed box system. It's designed to be that way. If a title is problematic, say if the blacks are elevated, Dolby needs to update the library and then hardware manufacturers need to develop a firmware update based on the updated Dolby Vision library to fix the problem. And given Sony's track record of releasing software updates, I mean, this Dolby Vision firmware already took ages. Right, one last thing I need to talk about before I wrap up, smooth gradation. Many of you will probably know I'm a big fan of this Sony exclusive feature, which can smooth out in-source posterization, which is present even on physical media, such as the Ultra HD Blu-ray of Planet Earth 2, so I'm a bit surprised to see smooth gradation disabled by default in Dolby Vision mode. After some testing, I now know why. For some reason, 
smooth creation in Dolby Vision mode on Sony TVs is much more aggressive, acting almost like a spatial filter with certain scenes, scrubbing away detail and film grain even on the low setting. If you set smooth gradation to low on the HDR10 Cinema Pro mode, it's very gentle, almost invisible, but in the Dolby Vision mode, it's like applying digital makeup. If you go to medium or high, faces start glowing with unrealistic smoothness, which certainly doesn't happen in HDR10 Cinema Pro mode. Bottom line is, smooth gradation should be kept off in Dolby Vision mode, and as a result, some scenes will exhibit more posterization. For example, this one near the end of Altered Carbon Episode 1. Now, theoretically, Dolby Vision can go up to 12-bit, but who knows what compression and bitrate Netflix is using, which I'm sure is the source of the posterization. And in Dolby Vision mode on Sony TVs, smooth gradation shouldn't be used at all if you don't want to destroy detail elsewhere. Let's sum up. Despite some shortcomings, Hopefully you can see from this video that Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata is beneficial even to HDR TVs with high peak brightness, contrary to popular belief among the video enthusiast community, and even among some TV manufacturers that if a TV is bright enough, dynamic metadata is not needed. That's not true at all, and unfortunately, I think I may be partially responsible for popularizing this myth with an article I wrote some two years ago. Sorry. In my defense, there was only a handful of Dolby Vision content two years ago, namely some Dolby Vision demo clips on a USB stick, and I didn't know then what I know now. Here's the thing. HDR content can go up to 4,000 nits, even 10,000 nits if we are talking HDR games, and the brightest consumer HDR television hasn't surpassed 2,000 nits in peak brightness. I don't really count the 100-inch Sony Z9 as a consumer television, so tone mapping is needed to map 4,000 nits or 10,000 nits to 2,000 nits, and dynamic metadata will allow the display to apply the correct tone curve according to the creator's intent on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. Yes, a high peak brightness TV with static metadata can deliver a more impactful HDR than a low peak brightness TV with dynamic metadata. But if you equip the same high peak brightness HDR TV with dynamic metadata, the results would be even better. The only remaining question is whether HDR10+, Plus, the open source dynamic metadata format, will be as effective as Dolby Vision. I will of course try to do a comparison video should the opportunity arises, but I can't even get my hands on a Samsung Q9FN, let alone two. Maybe I need to put up a donations page like Artings. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Again, a very big thanks to Richard Sounds Manchester for supplying these televisions. They are indulging my need to do proper comparisons, resulting in such valuable information for the whole AV industry. These Sony XC93 samples will be going back to richer sounds, and I'll leave the calibrated settings on them. So if you are interested in buying one, just ring them on 0333 900 0086. These videos take so much time and effort to film, to edit, and to produce. You don't know how hard it is to pause on the exact same frame using Netflix, especially when the remote control affects both TVs. So I'm just going to go and have a lie down. Good night, and I'll see you in the next video.